In this video, we talk about the next concept in the topic of composition table or operation table. We have already seen one numerical problem with all the explanation involved as to how to find out the identity element, the inverse of an element and whether my binary operation is commutative or not by drawing the composition table. So before watching this video, I advise you to please watch the previous two videos at least on binary operations. And let's get started with the next subtopic of binary operations called as multiplication modulo n. Let's read what does it mean. Before this, we had already done addition modulo. This multiplication modulo concept is similar to the one which we started earlier. In addition modulo, we were supposed to add the two integers and then divide it by n so as to get the least non-negative remainder. Similarly, in this concept, what we do is we take a, a set as z and the z set has n elements from 0, 1, 2, 3 to n minus 1. There is also n greater than 1 which is given, which was also given in the previous video. And what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to product or multiply the elements a and b and then divide it by what? Divide it by n so as to get the least non-negative remainder just as we did in the previous video. As we did in the previous video, we also have one example for this video. The example is of a set S with 2, 4, 6, 8 as the 4 elements. Since we are supposed to find out modulo 10 by this example, we will be computing modulo 10. So I would be writing here multiplication 10. In the earlier video we had plus, now we have multiplication. So I write multiplication sign. What are the elements of the set? They are 2, 4, 6, 8. So I write 2, 4, 6, 8 vertically also and horizontally also. What else is needed? 2 multiply by 4. This time it is not plus, this time it is multiplication modulo. So first multiply, then divide by what? Then divide by n which is 10. So 2 to the 4. 4 divided by 10, what is the remainder? It is 4 only. How has this come? We know 2 into 2 is equal to 4 and 4 divided by 10. So 10 how many is a 4? 4 does not come in the table of 10. So it is 0 and the remainder is 4. Right? So 4 is here. Now 2 4s are is 8. What is the remainder when 8 is divided by 10? It is 8 only. 2 6 are is 12. Now what is the remainder when 12 is divided by 10? It is 2. So I write 2 here. Similarly, just as we completed the table in the previous video, we are going to solve it for here. 2 8s are 16. Division will give me 6 as remainder. 4 2s are is 8. Remainder will be 8. 4 4s are 16. 6 is the remainder. 4 6s are 24. 4 is the remainder. 4 8s are 32. 2 is the remainder. In case you are not following, it is advisable to watch the previous video. 6 2s are is 12. 12 divided by 10 is 2 remainder. 6 4s are 24. 4 remainder. 6 6s are 36. 10 3s are 30. 6 is the remainder. 6 8s are 48. 48 divided by 10 will give me 8 as the remainder. 8 2s are 16. 16 divided by 10 will give me 6 as the remainder. 8 4s are 32. 32 divided by 10 will give me 2 as the remainder. 8 6s are 48. 48 does not go completely on the table of 10. But yes, 40 goes. So 8 is the remainder. Last but not the least, 8 8s are 64. And we have 4 as the remainder. Now, what is needed? Actually, this is a concept. So, we will be again finding whether it is commutative or not first. So, checking commutativity. Commutativity has to be checked. You first draw the diagonal. So, 4, 6, 6 and 4 is being covered. This 8 is of the below element. Now, when I have already drawn the diagonal, I need to check one thing. 
whether the information has below symmetricity and above along the diagonal. I mean the diagonal is already drawn. We have 8, 2, 6 here and 8, 2, 6 here. We have 4, 2 here and 4, 2 there. We have 8 here, we have 8 here. That means it is symmetric, so it is commutative. This concept we already started in the previous video. Next, what we need to check, we need to find out the identity element. Identity element is found out in the same way as we did in the previous video. What we do is, we see the order. It is 2, 4, 6, 8 in the vertical order. Where do we have 2, 4, 6, 8? Just below 6. So, 6 has 2, 4, 6, 8. Here also I have 2, 4, 6, 8. That means the identity element here is 6. Last but not the least in this video, we need to find out what are the invertible elements. The inverse of the elements. So, what was needed as we started in the previous video? Inverse is found out with the help of identity element. And what is the identity element 6? So, shade the box related to 6. 6 is here. Where else is 6? 6 is here. Where else do we find 6? 6 is here in this box. Where else is 6? 6 is here. Now we can easily find out what is the inverse. Moving from 8, I find 6 here horizontally and when I look above, I have 2. So 8 and 2 are the inverses of each other. That means 8 inverse is equal to 2. Similarly, I move a step above. I look at 6. Horizontally move, find here 6. Look vertically above, find here 6. That means 6 is the inverse of 6. Again, moving a step above, I find 4. Move forward, I find 6. Look above, I find 4. That means 4 is the inverse of 4. So, 4 is the inverse of 4. Last but not the least, I have to look for 2. So, I step up at 2. Move horizontally, find 6 here, look vertically above, find 8. So, 2 inverse is equal to 8. Now, observe few things. That 6 and 6 are the inverses of each other, okay. 4 and 4 are the inverses of each other, okay. But, when I found out 8 inverse is equal to 2, I don't need to do this step again. It is automatically understood that 8 inverse is equal to 2. So, 2 inverse should be equal to 8. That means 2 inverse should be equal to 8. You don't need to check it from the table as well. So, in this video, we saw what do you mean by multiplication modulo. We also saw how to frame the composition table for the same. The composition table had some elements which we listed down. We found out how to check commutativity, associativity can be done by solving, so we didn't do that. But yes, we found out the identity element and the inverse from the table itself.